Okay, everybody. Well, that wasn't very good. A little bit better. That is my drum roll. And this is my winter outlook for 2023, 2024. If you're not familiar, uh, I do these, what I hope you'll find to be very in-depth outlooks for the winter season around the first uh, few days of November every year. We've been doing this since the fall of 2000 and I've had some success. So get ready to sit back and we're going to go through a lot of information. Uh, and before I, I do get going, you know, I'm sure you've heard this is going to be an El Nino year. Um, and there were several years that I looked at carefully. One of those was December of 2015. And with that said, let's get going. December 2015, this was an historic month. This was an El Nino. And notice the header says wild card. This was a month that did not fit the rhetoric of El Nino. We had 15.24 inches of rain out at PDX. Do you remember? It was the wettest month on record. All of that rain had to lead to flooding somewhere, right? And it did. That photo is downtown Klamath, which seemed to have some of the worst flooding, if not the worst, that was covered in the news industry. There was also some flooding in Vernonia. The same month of December 2015, again, I'm looking back at recent El Nino years and see if we can draw some conclusions. This had the battleground EF1 tornado. Now, I know we've had our fair share of tornadoes lately. But this was an EF1 with 104 mile per hour gusts. There were reports of at least some damage to 36 homes, making this one of the absolute strongest tornadoes that we've ever had in the Pacific Northwest. It was a mild December. That part would be expected. Three full degrees above normal that helped actually lead to all of the rain. So remember 2015 December, because I'm going to come back to that. Okay, uh, it's important that... Uh, to look at what I said a year ago, so you know if this is worth your time. So one year ago, my outlook that I put out the first days of November said the following. I predicted a mild, wet November and December. Well, we did have wet months. Both of those months averaged out to be a little bit above normal. So that was good, but it was cold. I don't know if you remember this. In fact, December, I know, averaged a good three degrees below normal all in its own right. So the one thing I missed last winter was I was expecting it to be mild and wet to start November, December, and instead it was cold and wet. After that, the main bullet points that we were looking at were right on the money. We predicted a dry January. Turned out to be about 60% of normal with over three inches of total precipitation. And then the big feather in my cap from one year ago, do you remember this? We said, I wasn't sure we were going to get a big snowstorm, but if we were, if we were to get a big snowstorm, it would happen the last two weeks of February into the first couple of days of March. We had one big snowstorm. It hit on February 22nd, dumping 11 inches of snow in Portland. And what partially set that up was cold weather, a record low of 18 degrees on February 25th. So if you think about that, we pinpointed basically the two week window of potential big storms, snowstorm, and we hit it exactly right. Now you could say, I just got lucky. But there was a reason behind that. You remember last winter was the third consecutive La Nina season. I didn't think La Nina really favored last year's set up a big winter storm. But the data suggested that we were going to be transitioning out of La Nina beginning in the month of February and by March 1st be into a neutral pattern. It was that transition that caught my eye. And that's why I said if we were going to have a big snowstorm a year ago, last winter, it would happen during that during that transition in fact, the final two weeks of February. So that was a really impressive call that came true. Um, so, you know, hey, got it right. And uh, got to take some credit for it. All right, this year, El Nino. We haven't had this in a while. What are we talking about? Well, notice South America down here in black. Notice the red colors, this little elongated protrusion of warmer than normal surface temperatures in the Pacific. That is El Nino. So that's what we're dealing with now. So we're going to spend some time looking into what that means. Now, here's the typical flow pattern for, for El Nino. You get a strong southern branch of the jet stream that can produce flooding rains in the California, very wet weather across the Gulf Coast states, Florida, and the southeastern United States. The coldest air out of the Arctic Circle in Canada tends to drop down across the upper Midwest into the Great Lakes and New England. And we tend not to get that cold weather. And in fact, the ridging that sets up over the Gulf of Alaska also tends to weaken Pacific storms and we can have a drier, warmer, 
winter than normal. That is the stereotypical flow and the stereotypical El Nino, but it's not quite that easy. For example, it does matter. Is it a strong El Nino, a weak one, or a moderate one? Back in August, there was a lot of rhetoric that hit that this was going to be some sort of super crazy El Nino. Not true. So the definition of a super strong El Nino would be two degrees Celsius above normal water temperatures in that area off the coast of South America. Here's plus two Celsius. Notice none of these spaghetti weather model uh, projections predict this El Nino to be two degrees Celsius warm. Where generally, if you look at all these different weather models on the spaghetti chart between 1 and 1 1.4, that's a moderate strength El Nino. That's important. I base my research on that. Okay. So speaking of, these next several slides in the, the black highlight in the center of the screen are basically the conclusions just from the data that I looked at. Now, I went back and I found three comparison El Nino years strength-wise since 2000, the winter of 2002 and 3, 2009, 10, that December of 2015 into 2016. I'm looking at the rainy season months of November through March. So those three years, those five months, this is really compelling. 13 of 15 of those months, all but two, had above normal temperatures. In fact, the exact averages were just a little bit above normal November, December, but January was crazy warm, plus four degrees Fahrenheit from normal. February was about three and a half degrees, and March was plus two. And in fact, if you go all the way back to 1950, when we first started keeping tabs on El Nino, La Nina, or neutral cycles, four out of five of the warmest winters Portland have had, four out of five have been El Nino's. So here's a lot of hints, if you will, clues, statistics to back up a conclusion for a warm, mild, upcoming winter, which I am projecting we're going to have. Everybody wants to know about snow. So if you just run the averages from these comparison years, this doesn't look good. You come out with very little Portland snow. In fact, you come out with anything from not a single snowflake at low elevations to no more than three inches. So you come out with no big storms. And that three inches could be one event, could be a dusting here, one inch here, that type of thing. But no big snowstorm and very little snow overall. Now, what I did find interesting in my research is that there does seem to be an elevated chance of a freezing rain event. Uh, it was the El Nino in December of 2009 that produced a pretty good freezing rain event with a cold December that closed the Columbia River Gorge and produced a pretty good ice in Hood River. And we had some ice here in the valley. So... I really feel like the evidence overwhelmingly says no big snowstorm this year, but there is a decent chance of an ice storm. So I'm not saying we're going to get an ice storm, but I am telling you we're not going to get a snowstorm. So if we have any winter storm issues, it would come in the form of ice. That could be sleet or that could be freezing rain. So keep that in mind. All right. This is where I go back to that wet record December of 2015. Notice here my projection for total precipitation, mostly rainfall we're talking about. It's a wild card. I'm going to sit here and tell you that I cannot make a projection. I have no confidence. So I'm not going to pretend to tell you. Is it going to be a dry El Nino, a normal one, or a wet one? Again, odds favor being fairly dry, but here's the catch. Not only that December of 2015, but if you go back to 1980 in particular, and even farther back, there are a handful of El Nino seasons that went crazy wet. And in many instances, the crazy wet part came from one month in particular that had like 200% of normal precipitation. So there's enough of those outlier months that I'm going to tell you there is some hope that we will have a decent water season this winter. I can't project it, but you know there's reason to believe that, that we won't be crazy dry, that maybe we'll get some decent precipitation. That would be good news. So fingers crossed on that. All right, what about winds? I like to look at this. I did not find any reason to suspect a big windstorm, but I did find that the moderate El Nino year seemed to have a little bit more than average of these south wind gust storms of 50, 60 mile per hour wind gusts racing up the Willamette Valley. That's enough for a wind warning. That's enough for power outages. That's enough for some tree damage. Again, I'm saying El Nino years tend to have a couple more of these than you would otherwise see. So not a huge windstorm, but we'll look out for maybe two or three of these wind events where the south winds come gusting up the valley 50 to 60 miles per hour. Now, back to precipitation. And I think I've made it abundantly clear that 
with an El Nino setup, there's always concern that you could have one of those years that's just really dry, which of course is bad for the water year, bad for water storage, et cetera, et cetera. So for the water year, the entire 12 month period of time, Portland average is 36.91. Now, if you go all the way back to 1950, when we started catalog, uh, cataloging El Nino seasons, the driest year we've ever had in Portland was a La Nina season. That was 2000, 2001, only 22.99 inches. But if you look at the other four driest water years, they were all El Nino, starting with 76, 77, and wrapping up in fifth place, 1991, 1992. These are all very dry years. And it is alarming that four out of five of them were, in fact, El Nino years. So I'm just throwing that out there. That is absolutely a concern, no, no question. Okay, here's something that I've now been doing this long enough that I've got some data to try something I haven't tried before. So I personally am interested to see how this pans out. This is what the latest weather models suggest from the American CFS model for what we call pressure heights at 18,000 feet, 500 millibars, the main steering currents of the weather pattern flow. In November, see my red arrow? This is what we call ridging. This would be 567 millibar height. That would suggest you can correlate pressure height to ground temperature. That would suggest, by my research, a November it's going to finish up as much as two degrees above normal. December, 561 millibar height. You would expect as we get more into the winter, the pressure heights come down. That's typical. But 561 is almost as warm as we were cold in December a year ago. December a year ago, we were three, maybe four degrees below normal. Can't remember exactly. This year, I flipped the script, and I think... The data supports we could be four degrees or better above normal. So that's really warm. And then January, still above normal, but plus one, two. So I'm interested to see uh, how all of that works out. And I hope it's a tool I can start relying on as I uh, keep track and, and catalog what the pressure heights are from each winter season. So with all that said, I'm almost finished. This is my winter outlook conclusion. My highest confidence calls to tell you overall, it's going to be a mild above normal winter. That's. I'm not saying that we couldn't have a cold week here. I'm not saying that there wouldn't be a cold Arctic outbreak somewhere that runs for seven, eight days. What I am saying is that when we average it all out, every single month is going to be above normal until we get to March, and March may be normal. And I am saying that in terms of any particular month being above its climate average, that December will be the warmest month of the bunch. And you know where I got that 4.5 from that pressure height map I just showed you. So we'll see. Uh, of course, a warm December would mean, you know, a lot of 50 some degree days. It could potentially mean a lot of snow days in the Cascades where it's rain at 5,000 feet too. We talked about no uh, confidence to predict rainfall. Again, for the five month period, the average is 23.90 inches. We talked about no big storm. We did talk about, you know, an ice storm, freezing rain or sleet is 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 something that catches my attention. We'll see if we have that. All right, what about Mount? So that's the valley. Here's Mount Hood real quick. El Nino years favor the worst snowpacks. La Nina years favor 104% of normal by the time you get down to El Nino. Since 1999, the average on Mount Hood, 76% normal at the 5,400 foot level. So that's not great, right? And if I ran the averages of this particular El Nino cycle and like ones in the past, and you come out actually with an average on Mount Hood of 74%. That wouldn't be horrible. That's decent, just not great. My biggest concern in terms of the recreational season is that because of that mild December I'm predicting, it could be kind of a slow start to the snow season. And maybe into the holidays, there wouldn't be much snow. Maybe Ski Bowl would have 20 inches or less. Maybe Ski Bowl, or excuse me, Government Camp wouldn't hardly have any snow Christmas Day. So that's my projection. Then we would kind of get going and catch up and and have a decent, you know, January, February into March and finish the season at 74%. Now, here's my last slide. And this gives us hope. Seasons less than 70% of snowpack up on Mount Hood since 2000. Yeah, the last three have been El Nino's. But notice the ones that were crazy dry, alarmingly dry in terms of snowpack, were neutral years. 2014, 15, 25% of of normal. That was a neutral season, 2004, five, 44% of normal. So the point here is while El Nino favors it being below normal, history says that the catastrophic, really bad snowpack seasons were neutral years, not El Nino years. So, 
you know, I leave you on a positive note with that. Well, that is my winter outlook. I hope you'll tell your friends to watch it here on my YouTube channel. I hope you subscribe to this channel if you haven't. And uh, now it's the waiting game. And that's what forecasters do. We'll look at this in March and we'll look back and we'll, uh, we'll know then uh, if this was uh, good information or not. For now, I'm meteorologist Rod Hill.